within your body and offer them as a sacrifice to the Lord your God. You've got to praise in this place tomorrow. You can praise that you woke up this morning. You can praise that you're in your right mind this morning. You can praise that you have a reasonable portion of your health and strength and vitality in your body this morning. Every breath you take is because he meant for you to take it. Give God a praise with the very breath in your lungs this morning. Give God a ruach praise in the place this morning. Let the wind of God blow out of your lungs. Give him that what he gave to you. Give him your next breath. Give him your next breath. Give him your next breath. Tell him thank you this morning. Tell him I bless you this morning. Tell him I exalt you this morning. Tell him God you're mighty. God you're holy. God you're wonderful. God you're magnificent. God you're majestic. God you're ever living. God you know all things. You see all things. You are everywhere. You are omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. Nothing in my life takes you by surprise. You are everywhere that I am, and I bless you for that, God. You know everything I don't know, and I bless you for that, God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, God, because of you. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, it shall be condemned because of you, God. I am your servant. I am your conduit. I am your vessel this morning. I am your child. I am your creation, God. I give me back to you, God. So whatever you want to do, God, in this place today, however you want to show up in this place today, God, we give you free reign. So enter in, God. You inhabit the praises of your people, so let a praise that come out of this world today. Usher in the presence of God in this place today. Welcome him into your space today. Inhabit your people today. We welcome you this morning to Regeneration Church this morning. We thank you for worshiping with us this morning. But most of all, we give God a praise for being in our space today. Give God a big hand and clap of praise this morning. God, I thank you for the opportunity to tell your people what you whispered to me just this morning as we were prepared for service. I heard the Lord say he is getting ready to take you to your next thing. He said, whatever it is, it's a next thing. He said, but it's not a new level. He said, you've been praying for the wrong thing. I'm not taking you to a new level. I'm taking you to a new dimension of my glory. I'm taking you to a new realm of my glory. You don't need another level of where you've already been. You need to step into something. Somebody needs to do a prophetic gesture and just take a big giant quantum leap in the spirit this morning. Quantum leap into your next this morning. Because God said, I'm not keeping you where you are. I'm taking you someplace new, someplace you've never been. You're getting ready for new territory. I'm expanding your territory. I'm increasing your influence this morning. And when that door comes, when that window of opportunity shows up, you're going to look at it and say, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to walk through this. But the Spirit of the Lord said, the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. Whatever you need to say in that moment, the Holy Spirit will whisper it. Whatever you need to do in that moment, the Holy Spirit will bless you with the knowledge, with the wisdom that you need. In that space, give God some praise this morning. The Spirit of the Lord said, I have the Holy Spirit waiting for you. He's going to bring counsel. He's going to bring might. He's bringing power and authority that you've not had before. So get ready to step into a new dimension. Get ready to step into a new realm of my glory. And when you get there, don't forget to give me the praise. Don't forget to acknowledge me. Don't forget to offer me up a sacrifice. Because I did it just for you so that you can be a conduit in my kingdom this morning. Hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah in this place. So God, we thank you this morning. We welcome you in this morning. God, we give you free reign to do whatever you want to do today. We are your vessels, God. We are your conduits. And we say however way you want to get your glory this morning, bless us with the ability to give you your glory, God. Father, we thank you right now. We lift up our hands unto you, God. We bless this service today, God. We offer it to you, Lord God. We thank you for the ability to speak into the lives of your people this morning, God. We thank you for the ability to speak a word on behalf of heaven this morning, God. We say, speak, Lord, but your people are waiting to hear a word from you, God. They don't need my philosophy or pastor's ideology, God, but they came to hear what heaven is saying to them, God. In the name of Jesus, and God, we thank you right now. We give you glory, God. We give you praise, God. We thank you for the man of God who will preach the word this morning. We say, Holy Spirit. Fall afresh on him. Speak through him, God. Prophesy through him, God. Lay hands through him, God. Deliver through him, God. Set free through him, God. Heal through him, God. Every way your gift wants to show up, God, we say show up in this place today, God. 
And we give you glory. God, we bind every distraction, every hindrance, every obstacle, God, that will come against your people from getting in the place today, God. We thank you for angelic protection over your people, God, as they come here and as they depart from this place. We come in this service, God. We say there'll be no warfare as a result of what goes on in this place today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for coming your people to go for this work week, God. When they leave here today, God, they're going to have fresh power to do everything that you call them to do, Father. We thank you, God, for the authority of the Holy Spirit. We're walking in boldness in this new season, God. We say no more fear, no more trepidation, God. We're going to walk in this thing, and we're walking to the glory of God. And we say to the glory of God, amen, amen, and amen. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, don't let your praise stop right there. Why don't you give them a shout? Continue to shout. Continue to shout. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Yes, God. The Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel them in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel them in the atmosphere. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Now, if you don't mind celebrating the risen Savior, why don't you clap your hands in this place? Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we come to give you praise. We come to exalt your name. Come on and help me declare it in this place. The presence of the Lord is the presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Come on, put your hands on it right there. I'm going to take it up. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. To carry the spirit of
Yes, oh God. God, we empty ourselves in this moment. Yes. As we lift our hands and surrender, God, we allow your Holy Spirit to fill us up, God. Like a consuming fire, God, burn us up. And anything not like you, we pray it be removed now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Spirit, rain down, rain down. Oh, comfort the church and friends. Lord, we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Spirit, we need the rain. 
rain. We need the rain, God. We need the rain. Restore the Restore us again, God. Restore us again. Oh, God. Oh, we need a fresh outpour of your spirit. We need a fresh outpour of your spirit. Refresh us, oh, God. Oh, refresh us, oh, God. Restore us again. Restore us again. Holy Spirit, ready. Holy Spirit, ready. Holy Spirit, ready. Holy Spirit, ready. We need the rain. 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 We need the rain.
Scripture declares that the joy of the Lord filled the city. Everybody say joy. Say joy. Joy. The joy filled the city. He did some amazing works back and forth and did some amazing evangelists, people getting saved and all of that. But then what would happen is everyone was saved, but not everyone was filled. Everyone was saved, but not everyone was filled. Acts chapter 8 continues on to say that as Philip the Evangelist would do all these works in Jerusalem, the apostles heard all that, all that Philip did. And would say, oh my, we've got to do something to get down there and support what Philip is doing. And then when apostolic authority showed up, guess what else showed up? The Holy Spirit showed up. My God, my God, my God, the Holy Spirit showed up. If you want any uh, sign of any kind of apostleship, it's going to not be when they say it. It's not going to be on a flyer. It's not going to be something that they say. It's not going to be something that they do. It's not the clothes that they wear. It's whether or not the Spirit of God shows up when they show up. It's not going to be when people show up. It's not going to be when the clothing shows up. It's not going to be when the money shows up. It's not going to be when the politics show up. It's not going to be like Lady Pitt said. No, no, no conjectures, no, no thoughts, no uh, ideologies show up. Nothing, anything like that. It's when the Holy Ghost shows up. And when that happened, that's when it goes on scripturally to say that uh, there was a man that wanted the gift of showing up, of the Holy Spirit showing up in somebody else's uh, body. And, 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 and one thing that would happen is that people had to say, hey, listen, you cannot buy this gift. You cannot buy this gift. You cannot buy what I had to go through to get this gift. Go ahead and just tell yourself, you can't buy my anointing. Oh, you can't buy my anointing. Oh, you can't buy my anointing. You can't buy my anointing. You can't buy what, what it took to get here. You can't buy what it took for Lady Pitts to get where she is. You can't buy what it took for the little girls to get where they are. You can't buy what your queen of went through to get where she is. You can't buy it. So you can't buy it. Oh, my, my God. So when we ask the Holy Spirit to rain down in this place, in this place, and in Shelby County, as a whole, we are asking God to show up and show out like never before because we is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Oh, he's been so faithful. He's been so good. Holy Spirit, reign in this place. Let the angels of the Lord send forth signs and wonders in this place. In this atmosphere, let your presence fill this theater. Fill this theater. Fill this theater, oh God. Lay down. The calling this Pentecost, the refreshing, the refreshing. Let the rain refresh your people. Let the rain refresh your people. Let the rain refresh your people. Let the rain refresh us right now for the rest of 2023. What you've got in store for us. Oh my God, oh my God, even what you told the 
Get the refreshing you need right now. Get the refreshing you need right now. Get the refreshing. This is about you. This is about you. Get the refreshing that you need right now. Get the refreshing that you need right now. Oh, I can't let my eyes. Get your refreshing. It begins now. There is a word. But go ahead and start getting your refreshing. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in this house. Thank you for what you are doing. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? A hand clap of praise because he is worthy to be praised and worthy to be adored. Oh, my God, my God. The Holy Spirit is moving like never before. My Lord, my Lord, he is awesome. He is awesome. Now, this is an amazing time that we are in. Because I'm getting ready to, to preach a word that is Pentecost related. Pentecost was officially last week, but we know that the Holy Ghost does what he wants to do. So I'm like, okay, we need monthly. What we're, what we're going to do is observe Pentecost and receive the refreshing. Receive the refreshing. So let's go ahead and jump into the word this morning. And, um, and please bear with me as I do my... my uh, my production's anointing from right here while I was preaching. That's why that's why I was like, y'all sure y'all called to this? Because <laughs> sometimes, hey, it only takes one person after the show, and you'd be like, wait, hold up, I got to do this, this, that. Are you sure you called? That's where the anointing comes in. Yeah, anybody that says they called the pastor, called the preacher, called the servant, I'm like, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Let's walk through all of this. You sure you called to this? And if you're called to it, you'll be able to carry the weights of it. Can I get an amen on that? Carry the weights. Carry the weights of it. All right, let's look to the scriptures. We're going to the Amplified Classic Version first of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, when my son made me proud this morning, he asked me uh, about Pentecost. He said, what is, what is Pentecost? I told him about Pentecost. And he said, okay, in the, in the book of Acts, we started talking about the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 2, he said, oh, yeah, when, the, when, uh, when they started speaking in different languages, right? I said, boy, you better know what you're talking about. <laughs> Come on now. And so we talked about that. And I said, Acts, the book of Acts is where that is. And he said, that's Luke part two, isn't it? Said, well, what you know about Luke? What you know? Come on now. <laughs> so he made me proud this morning. It's like, okay, you're paying attention to something. So yes, the book of Acts is Luke part two. Luke part two. So uh, Acts chapter one, Acts chapter two, it reads as this in the Amplified Classic Version. And when the day of Pentecost, say Pentecost. Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place, just like today, we're all together in one place. Verse 2 says, when suddenly, say suddenly, suddenly. so ooh, suddenly, suddenly, that's what happens when you get into, a, into the Holy Spirit, suddenly, 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 when suddenly there came a sound, yes, there came a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent tempest blast. The King James says a rushing mighty wind, rushing mighty wind, a violent template, tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. It filled the house. Verse 3 says, And there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed, and which settled on each one of them. Yes, the anointing coming upon them for tongues. Verse 4. And when they were all filled, that's what we're talking about, being filled, being filled. When they were all filled, Amplified Classic says, Eugene's, Eugene, no, that's the message Bible, but Amplified Classic says, and they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other different foreign languages, tongues, as the Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expression in each tongue in appropriate words. First of all, before we go any further, go ahead and declare in the atmosphere, God is changing my language. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to speak to some people that I've never spoken to before. 
I'm going to be able to speak to, I'm, not, I'm about to speak their language. I'm about to speak the language of jobs. I'm about to speak the language of money. I'm about to speak the language of positions and kingship and anointing. I'm about to speak some language because, oh my God, it, uh, oh my God, go ahead and pray for me. I plan to go to uh, to city council meetings starting this month. Come on, we're, we're trying to speak some language. Oh my, we're trying to speak some language that we've never spoken before. Yeah, we're about to speak some languages that we've never spoken before with people we've never met before. Amen? All right, so jump into Acts chapter 3. Still in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. This is New King James starting with this one. It says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing, this is our title scripture for the refreshing today, times of of refreshing, yes, refreshing, may come from the presence of the Lord. Where does it come from? The presence of the Lord. We appreciate a nice vacation going to Aruba and all those places, but true refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. That's where we're getting our, our, our refreshing from. Verse 20 says, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Let's go Amplified with it. Amplified Classic says, so repent, change your mind and purpose, turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased, that is, blotted out, wiped clean, that times of refreshing, this is why I like Amplified right here, gives you some definitions, of recovering from the effects of heat. How much have, how much have y'all gone through in the past month? Come on now. Come on, y'all been feeling some heat? Come on, just yesterday it was 90 degrees. That's some natural heat. But I've been under some heat. Oh, my God. I've been under some heat lately. Been under some heat lately. So the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air. Yes, that's what I need. I need some fresh air. Some fresh air. Continuing on. May come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Verse 20 says, and that he may send to you the Christ, the Messiah, who before was designated and appointed for you, even Jesus. And I want to preach from the topic, as you already know, the refreshing. Yeah, it's Pentecost, Pentecost season, the refreshing. I'm believing God for a refreshing amongst his people. So today, in light of the power of Pentecost, and the power of Pentecost, Pentecost, where does that word come from? 50. 50 days after the resurrection, after Easter, after the resurrection, 50 days is Pentecost. And that is marking the day that the Holy Spirit fell among the people of God in Acts chapter 2. That is what we see in the day of Pentecost. So between Easter and Pentecost has been the, uh, the 40 days of infallible proofs where Jesus Christ himself resurrected in resurrected body uh, showed himself with many infallible proofs, Acts chapter 1. Then he, the day of ascension, when he ascended up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father, that is the day of ascension. Then 10 days of waiting. Ten days of waiting, waiting in the upper room for what God was going to do next. And here we are with Pentecost. The official day was last week on, on May 28th this year. So my, it's just amazing how my birthday falls on Pentecost. I said, okay, my birthday, church's birthday, come on, y'all better celebrate like it's your birthday. Come on now, give God a praise on that note. So the thing about it is, is that now we're in the Pentecost anointing where we are asking God, for the 50th day, that refreshing that comes. So some of you, this is going to the natural, some of you, under the sound of my voice, have been on long journeys. Long journeys. Long journeys. They've been long. They've been arduous. They've been hard. They have been difficult. So where you are trying to recover from the previous effects of the heat that you felt on this long journey. It's been almost like walking in a desert. Walking in a desert. You're dry. You're thirsty. You're asking God, what, when is my blessing coming? When is my turn coming? I've been serving you. I've been praying. I've been reading. I've been trying to do what I need to do right. All of that. Lord, I'm on a long journey and I need something from you. Some of you have been on a long journey, and quite honestly, you're fatigued. Yeah, you're fatigued. You're frustrated. Yeah, and even under the sound of my voice, as holy as you are, you're struggling in your faith. 
And I know, come on, we're just going to be honest today. When you are fatigued, you're, 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 you're struggling with your faith, you're asking God, where in the world are you in the midst of this set of situations that I'm facing? Where are you? Where are you? So today is, is an oil change in the spirit. You've got to pull your car into the shop sometimes and get an oil change because you can't keep running the way you've been running. Come on, you hit, hit 20,000, uh, 40,000, 60,000, 70,000, 100,000 miles. You've got to change the oil at some point or you will shut down. Say shut down, shut down, shut down. You've got to have an oil change, and that's what this day represents as an oil change in the spirit. So today we are asking God to jumpstart us for the rest of this year. That's what we're getting is a refreshing, a jumpstart for the rest of this year. So we can fulfill the purpose of 2023 with energy, with poise, and clear direction. I say with energy, poise, and clear direction. With energy, poise, and clear direction. I'm not about to fall out trying to serve the Lord. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus, we're not going to fall out trying to serve the Lord and serve our families and serve our marriages and serve our children and do what we need to do. We are going to have energy, clarity, and poise in the midst of the rest of this year. So, this only comes from the Spirit of God. So, simply put, like I said in our prophetic moment prior to starting, today is about you. Today is about you. It's about you as an individual. It is about you. It's about you. You and your relationship with the Father. You may not have had the opportunity to dive deeper into the Spirit to receive the next phase for your life, but today is that opportunity. Yeah. Before we begin, allow me to explain a few things when it comes to the Spirit of God. If you tuned in on, on virtually, you'll see some things uh, kind of repetitive, but I want to make sure that this gets in us before we achieve what God is trying to do today. So John chapter 14 says, John chapter 14, verse 16, I want to talk about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? You see it as part of the Trinity, part of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. What is the purpose of of the spirit seems pretty straightforward the father is the creator and orchestrator of the universe awesome cool got it the son okay he came he died he lived for 33 and a half years he died he resurrected from the grave i'm saved through him through the blood of jesus cool got it the holy spirit though might seem a little confusing so let let's let the scriptures tell us what the holy spirit does john 14 16 says and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper yeah it's highlighted for you he will give you another Helper. If there's any word that describes exactly what the Spirit of God does, he is a helper. That he may abide with you forever. All right? So verse 26 says, uh, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. What does he do? He's a helper. He's a helper. Say, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, when the old folks would simply say, help me, Holy Ghost, sometimes they didn't know all the all the theology, all the new pneumatology about it all. They didn't know that, but they could just simply say, help, and they knew the Holy Ghost would help. Yeah, because he's a helper. Yeah, so when the Holy Ghost, when the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I said to you. If I called you anointed 20 years ago, you're still anointed today. Imagine King David being anointed king as a child. Probably seasons and times where he's like, oh, does this kingship thing look good? Then he would anoint him again over one area in Hebron. But then get anointed a third time over all of Israel. It took a while. But he was anointed since a child. It took a while, but God spoke it to him. As a child, so imagine, if you will, yeah, that he is a helper. He will remind you of what he told you. Come on. Verse 15, verse 26. Uh, chapter 15, verse 26 says, but when the helper comes. Is the Bible good? Come on. Now, we're in the scripture. We're in the scripture. I, don't have to, I don't have to argue and debate when it's right there in the scripture. The helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father. He will testify of me. In other words, he's not testifying of, of your cars and your Bentleys and your houses. He's talking about what Christ desires out of your life. And lastly, continuing to prove scripturally what the, what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is. Nevertheless, I will tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go. This is Jesus talking. Jesus had to leave. For if I do not go away, the helper, the helper, 
will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Yeah, scriptures, scriptures. That's what proves where we are, that the, that the Holy Spirit is our helper. So let's continue real quick, because we want to receive the refreshing of the Holy Ghost this morning. So now, just jump over to 1 Corinthians. So one thing we often mistake in the tongues of Acts chapter 2 with the tongues of the Spirit that people cannot understand. Because understanding that even as I was having a discussion with my son, and he said, oh yeah, what about the Tower of Babel? And I said, that's exactly what we're talking about here, is the understanding that when you see the tongues of Acts chapter 2, there's a big debate about it. From the, I'm talking about denominational split about it, whether or not tongues should be done, tongues should, get, should exist. They stick to Acts chapter Chapter 2 and say, listen, those tongues are foreign languages. Okay, hard to debate that. Because that's exactly right. They spoke in foreign languages. Then, so those of us that are in the charismata, the charismatic type of church, that you've had a history of, hey, you're like, okay, but where is that? Because a lot of people will say Acts chapter 2 and they come from there. But no, where you're, what you're looking for is 1 Corinthians 14. Oh, is this building you up? Come on now, is this building you up? What you're looking for is 1 Corinthians 14 when we talk about the tongues of the Spirit. So Acts chapter 2 is clear that the, that the resultant of the tongues is the Spirit of God where other languages. It is a sign showing that the Lord has the ability to reverse what happened in Genesis 11. Tower of Babel. One language, everybody building something all the way up to heaven, and God crushed it down by splitting up their languages. But then in Acts chapter 2, we see the resurgence of what God can do through the Spirit of God is we can all speak the same language. Oh my God, we're speaking new languages and being able to connect again. Well, watch this. This is where people with one language could do nearly anything. Nearly anything. If we could speak the same language, church, we could do nearly anything. Oh my God. My God, if we could speak the same language, we could do nearly anything. I know that could get deep right there. Watch this. People walking by the Spirit of God with one accord can do amazing things. So you may ask, where do we get the tongues we often hear in charismatic church services? 1 Corinthians 14. The Apostle Paul makes it clear in chapter 14, verses 1 through 5, and it says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. Say prophesy, prophesy. I want to prophesy. Yeah, so I need to understand that spiritual gift. I need to prophesy. Verse 2. For he who speaks in a tongue, Bible, does not speak to men. Wait a minute. Hold on. The Bible says, Acts chapter 2, they spoke in tongues and people could understand. Oh, that's my, that's my, that's my home language. Whether I'm speaking Swahili or French or, or Spanish, that's, that's my home language. I understand that. But wait, 1 Corinthians 14 says, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. This must be a different tongue. Oh, my, my, my. I'm equipping you with the scriptures, equipping you with the scriptures so you can understand these debates and how folks, folks get real deep with these debates, too. They get so deep and then run away and, and just keep on running and never and, and do not fully invest in the fullness of the study. So for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Watch this. For no one understands him. That's the tongue. That you hear when, when people go into charismatic mode. Yeah, that's that tongue. That's that tongue right there. So no one understands him. However, in the spirit... He speaks mysteries. I'm trying to get you not only to the place of where you have a praise and you have a tongue, but I want you to have the understanding that when you speak in tongues, you are speaking a mystery of God. Oh, he was revealing some mysteries to you when he anoints you to speak in that heavenly language. Let's keep going here. Verse 3. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So there's a difference, apparently, between the heavenly tongue that a man cannot understand and a prophecy that you can understand. Yeah? We're getting it today? Come on now, this, this is why we got to talk about this, because in the midst of all of our charismatic situations, people will run with stuff and have no idea where it comes from in the scriptures. So watch this. So that's verse 3. Verse 4, it says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So here's 
What's the benefit of speaking in unknown tongues? I'm building myself up. Come on, Jude. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. While wow, that's Old Testament, and yeah, the tongues weren't there quite yet. This is a great example of building yourself up in your most holy faith, where you are praying in something that you don't understand, but you're speaking the mysteries of God, and you are getting a gift on the inside of you that you had no idea was on the inside of you, that no one else understands, which is why folks look at you crazy. Because you've got a gift on the inside of you that no one understands. No one understands. Why are you so blessed in your area of expertise? Why are they hiring you and not me? Why are they going with you and not me? Why Why did he marry you and not me? Why? Did, come on now, come on. This, why? Because there is something on the inside of you that God has anointed to take further and higher in the earth realm. So, he who, uh, who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So when I speak prophetically saying that this is a refreshing, you understand what I'm saying, and you can be edified. Yeah. So there is the anointing to prophesy and the anointing to speak in an unknown tongue. And watch this, verse 5. I wish you all spoke with tongues. What, Paul? You want us all to speak in tongues? Yeah, yeah. I wish you all would speak in tongues. Watch this. But even more that you prophesy. So it's like, so I've got a level five desire of you speaking in tongues. I go to level seven when it comes to prophecy. I want you to prophesy more than speak in tongues. But even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Simply put, tongues and prophecy are needed in the church. They both edify. Because I have to prophesy to make it clear. And then he goes on in, in 1 Corinthians 14. He goes on to discuss the differences in tongues. I need y'all to read that as homework. He goes on to discuss the differences in tongues and prophecy. And how tongues are for those who are already in Christ and receive edification. Prophecy helps unbelievers with their revelation of Jesus Christ. Because guess what? If somebody that's a non-believer and I'm a roll call and lay hands on them, they have no idea. But if I prophesy and say that the Lord is blessing you, the Lord loves you, and you can receive Christ right now, come on now, you understand. Yeah. So we're speaking the mysteries of the church on this Pentecost observance. So let's make sure we are clear on what we are doing and receiving. So today, though, say today, today, today. Today, after clearing that up, I want you to understand something. I am asking God to give you some things. Go ahead and put your hands up and say, I'm ready to receive it. I'm ready to receive something. I'm ready to receive something. Watch this. Watch this. He's going to give you some things. Some you may have already, but gain, I want you to gain a refreshing and a sharpness and a confidence in the spirit on the things that, on the things that God is going to give you. Watch this. As he prepares you in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, I want him to give you the tongue of of the learned. We we're, we're on tongues today, are we? Come on, Holy Ghost, Pentecost, tongues. I want him to give you the tongue of the learned. And not just the tongue of the learned, but the ear of the learned. Oh, my Lord. We ought to come on. So look, look at the scripture. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. For those of you that are struggling, those of you that are tired, those of you that are fatigued, those of you that are ready to give up, I'm asking God to anoint you with the tongue of the Lord so you can help other people who are tired, frustrated, and all that out of this refreshing. The tongue of the Lord, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Watch this. He awakens me morning by morning. In case you wonder where that comes from, when singers sing morning by morning. Give me mercies I see. Come on. Morning by morning. Right here. Morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Ooh. Could you imagine having the tongue of the learned and the ear of the learned in a time and season like this? Oh, my God. All that's happening in society, knowing what God desires to speak and how to hear and how to discern and speak a word right on time. Come on now. That is what we are needing in this hour. I'm asking God to give you the tongue of the learned and the ear of the learned. I'm asking God to also give you some more things. 
Yeah, he's, he's full of gifts. I'm ready. I'm asking him to give you some other things. I'm asking him to give you, if you don't have it already, or to sharpen if you already have it, I'm asking God to give you the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Y'all like my design? The gifts of the Spirit? That's cool. Yeah. All right. So the gifts of the Spirit. You'll find these in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 12. The gifts of the Spirit. I'm asking God to give you the gifts of the Spirit. And they can be sectioned off into three different sections where you're talking about, first of all, the revelation gifts. That is a word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. The word of wisdom. The word of knowledge and the discerning of spirit. So, so what are these? Quick, quick de definition, and, I, and this is what I'm going to advocate as well, that you join me in online Bible study. I've got to do the commercials, right? You join me in online Bible study verses where we walk through verse by verse, and I want to define all these things for you when we get to those books. But quick definition, word of knowledge, literal information that downloads out of the spirit, and you had no idea where it came from. You didn't go to college for it. You didn't learn it from somebody. Word of knowledge, I'm speaking Knowledge saying that, you know what, if I connect this connector and do this and do that, you don't have any engineering background, but it just comes to you like that. Word of knowledge. Then word of wisdom, the application of knowledge. That is, all of a sudden, the knowledge that I do have, I have wisdom in the situation. Hey, let me help you with your marriage, even though I'm not perfect at it. Let me help you with your marriage. There's a word of wisdom that comes through me to give you a word for your marriage. Word of wisdom. No, no, it's, it's, no, I know that you want to spend money on that new boat, my brother, but maybe you should need to save on that boat for a second and focus in on going on vacation with your wife. That's a word of wisdom. Because there's, 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 there's an anointing on the timing of what it is that you're getting ready to do. And then the discerning of spirits. That is not me walking up in the church saying, I smell sin. No. <laughs> y'all sinning, y'all sinning, y'all sinning. I can tell I just sinning, you're sinning. That's not, that's not just calling out spirits. Discerning of spirits, not only the demonic. Yeah, you can, you can, yeah, you can get into the demonic and say, ooh, uh, and call out every demon name that you saw in, your, in the book that defines demon names. The, the, the demon dictionary, there's actually a demon dictionary, by the way. And uh, you can actually define all that and do all that. Discerning of spirits is, you're a good person. You might not be saved, but I can tell you, you're good. you've got a good heart. Or... Even if you are saved, you got some evil intentions. That's discerning of spirits. Like you're here, but your your intentions are off. There's something. I, lo I love it when my wife is looking at somebody and she's like, I don't like her. I don't like him. And it's not and she's not catty, she's not being petty. There's something on that person. I'm just gonna watch you. Just gonna watch. I'm, no, you're not coming over to my house. <laughs> There's something, no, you're not doing, no, I'm not giving you this, no. I, I need to watch you for a while, because you might not have the right intentions. Yeah, discerning of spirits. Yeah, that's where that comes from. So you understand you can discern somebody's spirit. Gifts of the spirit continue. The next section is power gifts. Power gifts. The gift of faith. There are levels of faith. There are levels of faith. There is no faith, also known as doubt, that you'll see in the scriptures. O ye of little faith. You have a little faith. Come on, Scripture, Bible. You have little faith. But then there's also the Roman centurion. I have not seen so much great faith in all of Israel. Great faith. But then this final level, the gift of faith. That's a whole other level of faith where you just believe God. If I want to draw any scriptural parallels, it would be Peter stepping out onto the water. All the other apostles were standing and they said, oh, what a storm, what a storm. But Peter saw Jesus and said, bid me to come. Jesus did not say come. Peter said, bid me to come. He started it. That's faith. He started it. That's faith. I want to see that's the gift of faith where there's something amazing is going to happen through you. The working of miracles. What is a miracle? It is the temporary setback, the temporary shutting down of physics and natural laws to get you through and to another place. Also known as the parting of the Red Sea. That's a miracle, God. I'm sorry, the parting of the Jordan. That's a miracle, man. I'm sorry, there, there are things that are just happening that are just miracles, unexplained by science. How in the world did that get there, do that, upside down, whatever? It's a miracle. 
the working of miracles, where through you, when you speak, you touch, you show up, something amazing happens. The working of miracles. Then the other power gift, the gift of healings. Healings, key word is poor. Healings out of your hands. Come on, the laying on of hands of the Presbyterian, the elders, come on, the book of James, where you can lay hands and heal the sick. The healings, you have healing hands. You have a healing anointing where I could take off my coat, lay it on you, and you will rise up in full health. Healings. That, that's the anointing where you operate in healings. And then there, there are other sides to it where you have the challenges that are the exact opposite that will challenge your faith. If you operate to get the healings, then you may be struggling with some sicknesses. But in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for you to rise up in the name of Jesus and that nothing that the enemy would want to do to you or hurt you will ever be able to prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. You operate in these gifts, and then the enemy wants to show you the opposite. Come on now. So then the other set of gifts, the, the, these, are, these are the inspiration gifts. Prophecy, we talked about that. That is foretelling and forth telling, that is the prophetic word that comes out of you to be able to see, to hear, to understand, to speak something into the atmosphere, into a place that you do not, that is not already there. That would be like me uh, giving a founder's prophetic blessing to say, oh my God, Regeneration Church will be filled within the next year. Something like that, where I'm, just, I'm said it, I'm asking God to do it, where I'm crazy enough to just ask it, where, where, where guess what, God, I'm asking you to do something amazing to where this theater is not big enough. Come on, come on. This is this is what happens when you start something. That's why I always got to ask people who say, I want to start a church. Wait a minute, are you sure? Because you're going to have days. You're going to have days where you put it all out there and, and you don't know what, what you're going to get. So, so, so that's where you prophesy something into fruition. Can these bones live, Ezekiel? Can these bones live? Yes, they can. Gifts of the Spirit, impartation gifts, continue. Then you have the unknown tongues. We justify that, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, where the unknown tongues are coming out. Not the Acts chapter 2 tongues that we have been told all our lives in church. That Acts chapter 2, they quote, no, 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 wait a minute. No, that's Spanish. That's Greek. That's Israeli. Those are foreign language tongues in Acts chapter 2. Oh my God, yeah, it's quite enough because those are four language tongues where the anointing comes upon you, and I now have a new language. And I got a new language. I'm getting ready to speak to some people I've never spoken to before. I've got a new language, I've got a new way to talk. But then 1 Corinthians 14 is those unknown tongues where you speak in those tongues and you edify yourself. Yeah, where you speak in those heaven, that heavenly language and you edify yourself. Yourself, because you're talking to God, the mysteries of God, according to First Corinthians chapter 14, the interpretation of tongues. If I speak in a tongue and I am in a place of the anointing, then somebody in the house ought to also have the gift of the interpretation of tongues, where I speak in a tongue and then somebody can come behind me and interpret that tongue, or I can interpret that tongue. That, and, and then that's why it's so critical to understand that's what he defined, that's what Apostle Paul defined in 1 Corinthians 14, because he was bringing order to the church, because folks were just running around, skipping and dancing, blah, 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 blah. and I've got tongues that you don't have them, I've got tongues that you don't have them, I've got... That's what was happening in the Corinthian church. They had money, they were wealthy, and they were also arrogant. My church is bigger than yours. I got baptized by Paul. You only got baptized by Peter. You think I'm playing. I'm serious. My spiritual father is Deacon Dr. Such and Such. Oh, your spiritual father, I am. That, that, does that sound like today? Yeah. No knock. To, to, to the Bishop T.D. T. D. Jakes, the Bishop of the world is what I call him, and I, and I am thankful for him. But yeah, man, folks spent $10,000, $12,000, $20,000 to go down to a conference where their local pastor told them the exact same thing. Uh -oh. You could have you you given that $10,000 to your local church, and boom! Imagine $10,000 coming to this church. What could we do? First of all, we could have services more often. Hallelujah. This is, what, 550, 550 per service? Yeah, hallelujah. Easily have more services more often. If you took that 10000 that you went down to Florida with and just give it to your home church, and then next thing you know, boom! 
They can, you can see the changes simply because of your involvement. You can also see the challenges due to your lack of involvement. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. When you're on the ground floor of something, that's why, come on, stock market, speaking another language, that's why when you get in on the ground floor of a thing, if you invested in Apple in the 1980s, oh, no, the Apple's like, don't invest in me now. We're about to hit a $3 trillion market cap. Yeah, that's what they're projected to hit. $3 trillion worth of value in 2023, 2024. But uh, had you hollered at us when we actually needed your money, you could be rich today. Let me say the same thing in ministry. Your, your most famous pastors, famous apostles, all of that stuff, you could give a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars right now, and they still don't know your name. Am I on it? Am I on it? Come on now. I remember having a counseling session with somebody like that saying, I, I want to be with the apostle such and such. If I said the name, you know. I want to be with such and such. I want to be with such and such. Listen, listen, let me let me give you a word right now. This was the word of wisdom. Let me give you a word real quick. This word is simply this. Are you sure that you want to join something where you know that your spiritual father, your pastor, will never know your name? Do you care? Do you care that you have that person's phone number or not? Do you care that you will not be able to get a meeting with that person ever? Next thing you know, there was a change in the attitude of that. Because you want to have a relationship with somebody that knows your name. When you're on the ground floor or something, you can have that relationship. Yeah. You're vested in that thing. Ain't nothing wrong with going big. Just be aware of what, because when this gets big, there's going to be folks that be like, hey, I should have joined the train back in 2023, man. I don't know. It's 2027 now. I don't know. I, I don't even know. Oh, thank you for $1,000. All right, y'all bless you. We're busy now. Come on, me, me and the team, me and this team right here, we got to go fly to Florida. We got to go fly to Texas. We got to go fly. Yeah, yeah, come on. Are, are you receiving that? Come on. <laughs> what did I say? The gifts, the gifts. All these gifts. I'm prophesying. I'm giving you a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Me and the team. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to have money like that. So you put all y'all on the plane and go fly to All right, come on, come on. Because you're on the ground floor of a thing. So all of that said, these gifts are critical. So you have those revelation gifts, the power gifts, the inspiration gifts. But then I'm also asking, because God, to get, not only did God give you the tongue of the learned and the ear of the learned, Isaiah chapter 50, the gifts of the Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm asking God to give you gifts today in this Pentecost anointing. I'm also asking God to give you the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit what is the fruit of the spirit you'll see that in galatians chapter 5 verses 23 through 23 love 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 this is not just regular love where it's like oh i love that pizza i love a pepperoni pizza no that's not that love this is that agape love there are multiple types of love that's why we love is arguably the most misused and misunderstood word in the english language i love you okay what kind of love what kind of love Come on, date people that are dating. What, what kind of love are you talking about? You love me like you love like you love a pecan pie, or do you love me as in like you want to marry me tomorrow? What kind? What's the level of love here? Yeah. So that love is agape. There's there's different levels. So you have philos, that is brotherly love. You have storge, that's family love. You have eros, that's that's emotional and sexual love. This is the agape love, the love of the cross, where uh, death has occurred because I love you. That's a whole other level. That's unconditional. Then you have joy. That is not the same thing as happiness. Happiness is, oh, I sure love the, the pants I got on, but if those pants ever burn up or get lost or get torn up, then I've lost my happiness. No, my joy is from the Lord. My joy is the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I've got joy, and in that joy, I have a situation where that joy cannot be taken from me. I'm, I've got the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah chapter 8, but the joy of the Lord is my Strength, peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm at peace no matter what is happening in my life. I might be concerned. Don't get that twisted. I might be concerned about what's happening, but that I still have peace in my life. Long-suffering, that is simply patience. 
I know how to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait again, and I say, wait on the Lord. Kindness and goodness, similar. That is that, that goes back to discerning the spirits. I can tell that you're a good person. There's kindness that emanates out of you. I'm good. I know how to serve people. I know how to help people in the time of need. Come on, now, faithfulness. I'm faithful in what God has for me. I'm gentle. I'm gentle. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going off on you. I'm not uh, angry at you. That's why you have to go against the Galatians 5 works of the flesh. Anger and malice are part of the works of the flesh, but then I have what? I have gentleness in the fruit of the Spirit. So I'm the opposite of what the works of the flesh would have. And then lastly, which is arguably the biggest one, self-control. At the end of the day, if you can't control yourself, oh, you can't control yourself. I got to control myself. So when you have the Holy Ghost, it's not just about a shout in church. I love a good shout. Don't you love a good shout now? Y'all love good shout. I can turn on. We can, we can run around this place. But the Holy Ghost is not just here for your shout. The Holy Ghost is here to give you gifts, fruit, anointing. So then, as lastly, and then I want to have an experience with God here. I want him to also give you power. Yeah, let's go by that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples, say, I'm a disciple, I'm a disciple, I'm a disciple. When he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power, power over unclean spirits. Come on now, some stuff in your house is it, it, not, it's not just a phase. It's not just something your kids are going through. No, it's an unclean spirit that you need to have power to cast out. Come on now. I need to have power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Yeah, I need some power. Then we need to go to Luke 9, Luke 9, chapter 1. Yeah, lots of Bible to prepare for our experience. Watch this. Luke 9. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. Watch this, not just power, dunamis, power, but authority. There's a difference between power and authority. Power is my strength. I'm able to lift up my son and pick him up, but my authority is that he will follow my instructions. There's a big difference, isn't there? See, you can, you can be, be powerful and have somebody fear you to, to submission, but my authority is what keeps you under submission because you either love me or you respect my authority. Yeah. The authority. So power and authority over what? All demons. No, wait, wait, wait. So not just those demons defined in the demon dictionary. Not just the, the ones over the water. Come on now, we get real deep, don't we? Come on, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. You get real deep. You got, oh, I bind this demon that's over the water. I bind the smoking demon. I bind the weed demon. I bind the Nike demon. I bind... And all Jesus did was say, get out. Oh, I go. Come on. When all Jesus did was said, get out of him, get out of her. The one demon, ironically, that he did talk to was a legion of demons. Woo. Come on, the man of the Gadarenes who was so crazy that he was chained up and he was cutting himself. Come on, depression, cutters, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking God to cast that out in the name of Jesus. Watch this. Where there was a demonic infiltration on that man, the man of the Gadarenes, and he said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for we are many. And all he did was say, get out. And then they begged him. Don't cast it out before it's time. Come on, Jesus, help us out. So he sends them into pigs, which is where the Muslims get, we're not going to eat pigs. Fair point. Very fair. Very fair. I'm sorry, but I like that. So, before you read it, get out, you pig demon! Because you have power and authority. Come on now, because at the same time where the Muslims stop, they forgot that Jesus said all through his claim. Ooh, Bible, yeah. So watch this. 
So he gave you power and authority in both Matthew 10, 1 and Matthew and Luke 9. I want you to understand that out of this place today, you are leaving with power. You're leaving with power. You're leaving with power. I do not want you powerless, but powerful. So you are getting the tongue of the learn, the ear of the learn, the gifts of the spirit, the, 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 the fruit of the spirit, and you are getting power from the spirit. So as we have this worship experience, if you will, I am asking God to bless you in this moment, to take you higher. If you would, join me in a moment of worship. Like I said, this is about you. This is about you. This is about you. This is about you and your relationship with God. This is about you and your time with God. This is about you and what God has for you. This is about you. This is about you. Come on now. This is about you. I want you to turn up your, 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 your faith right now. Turn up everything that's on the inside of you. I'm asking God to give you the gifts. I'm asking God to give you the anointing. I'm asking God to take you higher and further right now in the name of Jesus. This is your moment. This is your moment where he is still moving. He is still moving. He is still healing. He is still delivering. And not only that, not only that, because of you showing up today, he's going to do it through you. Come on, come on, come on. Through you. Through you. Through you. Yeah, not just through Pastor Pitts, not just through Lady Pitts, through each and every one of you. Yes, even through my children. Through you. I'm asking God, oh Holy Spirit, in this moment, would you refresh us? Refresh us in this time, in this season. Lord, give us a passion, oh God, to seek you, to believe you, to understand you. We thank you, oh God, for the gifts today. I'm asking God right now. I'm asking God right now. In the name of Jesus, if you have the faith, if there is something on the inside of you that desires to know what God has for you, this will be a time, if you've never spoken in tongues before, this will be the time to lift it up. Say, I taught on it so you can experience it. I taught on it so you can experience it. That's where apostolic authority comes from. I teach on it so you can experience it. I'm not just teaching for the sake of teaching and sounding good. No, I'm teaching so you can experience. If you've never said a tongue before, this would be your time to allow the Spirit of God to grab the Holy Spirit. When the apostles showed up in Samaria, when the apostles showed up in Samaria, Philip had done the work, had done the groundwork, and joy was in the city. But then the apostles showed up and the Holy Ghost, oh my God, my God, my God. Then the Holy Ghost showed up. Then the Holy Ghost showed up. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. This is where you understand that God is doing something on the inside of you. And while in this moment, in this moment, I'm asking God on your behalf, I'm asking God on your behalf, to activate the gifts of the Spirit. To activate the gifts of the Spirit. The revelation gifts, the power gifts, the inspiration gifts, every gift right now in the name of Jesus. No matter where you work, if you, whether you work in banking, in politics, in teaching, in school, in whatever area you work, you are operating in the fullness of your gift. Oh my God, my God, my God. The fullness of your gift. 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 God is giving you the gift of the Holy Ghost. God is giving you the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. And all that pertains to the giving of the Holy Spirit. Come on, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking God to not only give you the gifts, the inspiration gifts, the power gifts, and the, the, Lord God, the revelatory gifts. Thank you, oh God, for the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. 
Thank you, oh God, for love, joy, peace, long suffering. Thank you, oh God, for the ability to know the times and the seasons. Thank you, oh God, for the ability of discernment right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the discerning of spirits. Thank you for the discerning of spirits. Thank you, oh God, for the power right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, oh God, for the anointing right now. Thank you, oh God, for the power right now. Thank you for the anointing right now. It's so cool. No limits. No boundaries. No limits. No boundaries. No limits. No boundaries. No limits. No boundaries. Every boundary is broken. Every boundary is broken. Every hindrance is broken. Oh my God. Every hindrance is broken. Every hindrance in your life, on this ministry, in our minds, in our souls. Every soul tie is broken in the name of Jesus. I cancel every false prophecy that has been spoken over your life. I cancel every curse that has been spoken over your life. Saying that you wouldn't take it. Saying that you wouldn't take it. Saying that you couldn't take it. Saying that you couldn't do it. Saying that you won't do it. Say it. Oh, my, 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 Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh my God, my God, my God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. As I lay my hands, man, God. As I lay my hands, man, God. I'm asking God not only to fill you with his spirit, but to give you the understanding, to give you the gifts, to give you the power, to give you the anointing, to take you to new heights, to new levels, new heights, and new levels, new heights, and new levels. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's it, that's it. That's the Holy Ghost. That's it, that's it. Your feet are covered. Your feet are covered. Your feet are covered. Wherever the soles of your feet shall tread, that shall the Lord give you. I don't know a better way to see all of this. An unreligious communion. <laughs> Come on, everybody knows the scriptures in this room. We know. So, thank you, O oh God, for all that has come to pass today. Thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. Thank you for the anointing. We ask that you would bless these elements, O oh God, that you would anoint us, O oh God. And we seal this time with the blood, the blood that saves, the blood that heals, the blood that delivers. And everyone under the sound of my voice is made all the better for being here today because we know that you were in the place. We know your spirit was here. And we thank you for showing up. And we honor you today, oh God. We leave freer. We leave lighter. We leave, oh God, excited about what you are doing and saying in our lives. And we ask, oh God, as we receive our communion today, that, Lord, you will bless it, seal it, anoint it, and get the glory through our lives. Let us eat, let us drink together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, wow, what a service. I'm just amazed. I'm astounded. If you would, go ahead. If it's in your heart after all that has occurred today, sow a seed into the Generation Church. Bless the Lord for what he has done. Sow a Pentecost level seed, anointing seed. We have to see, you see the giving options on the screen where you've got cash at We Are Regeneration and then uh, PayPal at We Are Regeneration. You can also download Giveify, search for Regeneration Church. Or you can also uh, go by text to give. You can text give our seed to 44321. Text give our seed to 44321.
And for those that watch the replay of this, if you want to uh, mail your gift, you can mail it to Regeneration Church P.O. Box 1815, Calera, Alabama 35040, and we will be honored and privileged to receive those gifts. And of course, if you are not a member of this church, we want to and uh, we want to invite you to join. We want to cover you. We want to bless you. We, we're just excited about Regeneration Church growing and be a blessing to Shelby County. So if you would, text, you can text join RC to 84576 or scan the code that's on the screen and fill out that information and we will be honored to have you as part of this ministry that is on the move. And of course, if, if you are officially joining, please let me know. we got to get a picture in and all of that. And we'll be honored and privileged to have you with us. Listen, as we leave this place, but from never before his presence, may God cover you, keep you, watch over you, and anoint you, and bless you, take you higher and further than you could ever imagine. And we thank God for what he is doing in your lives. God cover us. God keep us. God bless us. Thank you for sealing this time with your blood. Thank you for showing up, Holy Spirit, and thank you for all that you have done. We love you, honor you, and bless you. <laughs> and thank you. And we seal it in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen.